It's a continuation of yesterday's gospel reading. Still in the temple area, still in the Feast of Tabernacles, which again, the Feast of Tabernacles celebrates God's dwelling presence among the Israelites in the wilderness in the book of Exodus. That it was God who rescued them from Pharaoh. He rescued them from slavery. He brought them across the Red Sea. He brings them out to the wilderness. He establishes a covenant where he makes the Israelites their blood brothers enter into worship. And then, as we will see on Tuesday, they build a tabernacle which is meant to be a movable, portable Mount Sinai, again, where God was dwelling, okay? And so God's dwelling, his presence and guidance. And so today, as the conversation concludes, and it concludes with the Pharisees wanting to pick up stones and to stone Jesus, That's how the conversation ends. God's dwelling presence is among them right now. But they're wrapped in their box. They're in their own little world where they understand in their mind, they understand how God should act. God doesn't act in a very humbling way. You know, the whole incarnation of God becoming man is God emptying himself, taking on our weaknesses, frailties, and human limitations. But they don't know God. They don't know the Father, as Jesus tells them in the middle of this conversation. They don't know him. They think they know him. They consider themselves experts. You know, just like sometimes we... Catholics for our whole lives can consider ourselves exit, uh, experts and, and we put God in, our little, in his little box. This, this is how, these are the parameters in which God acts. <laughs> you know, we do it, I do it. We put limitations on him. And that's why I always say, you know, in our prayer lives, we often, our struggle in our prayer is that we don't ask enough from God. We ask too little of him because he's in, he's in our little box. You know, he's in our little box. And we believe, you know, that he works from a very far distance. God's up up in the heavens doing his thing. We forget that he's right here doing what he does and doing what he does best. Very near, very close, just like in this conversation. God's looking at those religious leaders face to face. But they don't fit their little world. He doesn't fit the little world. And so when he says that he's greater than Abraham and that Abraham saw the day that he was coming, they can't believe it. They can't believe it. It has to be destroyed because their whole way of living has to change. It's easier just to kill it rather than be converted and changed. And so at the very end, when Jesus says, before Abraham came to be, And then he others the name of God. I am. You remember where where do we know that name of God in Exodus at the burden bush? When Moses asked God's name, he says, I am. And Jesus utters that name. God's presence is right there. God's very close. God's looking to save them. But they can't handle it. And so they want to stone him. But Jesus escapes because his hour. Notice even when God dies, it's on God's terms. Jesus' hour has not yet come, and so he leaves. But it will come. Will come when God acts in such a way that is definitely outside of our bounds, that God is going to humble himself and submit himself to death for out of love and mercy for us. We can't think that God acts like that for us, but he does. May God bless you.